Hello everybody, this is Rob Riker, your instructor and mentor. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is a VPN. Now when it comes to understanding what a VPN actually is, we need to define a couple of things first and foremost, and then we'll be able to dive into those specific details. First and foremost, we're going to be diving into the definition of a VPN. Then we'll take a look at the VPN overview. What does a VPN do and how does it work? Then we'll take a look at the different VPN types and then wrap up with the VPN underlay and overlay. So when it comes to a VPN definition, first of all, it's a it's virtual. So it's a logical instantiation of something. Now this is a logical connection. The logical connection meaning it's happening in software. It's connecting, doing things that are going to be happening behind the scenes. It's private, meaning that the communication between endpoints is only visible to those endpoints. Next we have the network aspect of VPN, which is a data can be exchanged between the endpoints. Now we'll take a look at the VPN overview. Now logically what the VPN is designed to do is interconnect two networks that are not located at the same location. So this could be a variety of different things. We have the traditional WAN model where we have a situation where we have a WAN connectivity regardless of what the underlying transport is of the WAN. In this case we're demonstrating it with MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. We have two routers, one on each side of the WAN cloud that are being used to connect to the WAN and then we have a endpoint behind that. In this case here it's a PC that connects to the router. Now the purpose of the router connecting to the endpoints is to provide that connectivity that the cloud or the WAN is providing for us. Another variation of that is over the internet where we use firewalls. Now this is going to be in terms of we have an internet connection and we need to do what they refer to as a site-to-site -site VPN. The v firewalls are doing the exact same thing the routers are doing except for the transport between the firewalls is the internet. So it's a public access not a private access like the WAN is the firewalls are providing the same connectivity that the routers did for the endpoints and providing connectivity over the internet. Now the connectivity between the firewalls is going to be protected inside of a transport known as IPsec. And then the last VPN connection we're going to be discussing is going to be what they refer to as the remote access VPN where we have a PC that connects to the internet via some method and we disable. We went ahead and we did, took out the the router and the firewall here to simulate that the PC could be directly connected to the internet. Your mobile phone, if you're out on the 4G LTE network, has a public IP address, and therefore, if it's got a VPN client on it, or if your PC happens to get a public IP address for whatever reason, you too can also directly connect to a firewall that's enabled for VPN services, and then behind that firewall will be have an endpoint that endpoint is able to be reached over that VPN connection between the PC and the firewall over that internet circuit via the remote access VPN. Now when we come down to VPN types we need to break down some of the different variations of that because not all VPNs are created equal. The first one we have is what they refer to as inline VPNs. Now inline VPNs are going to be commonly referred to as MPLS layer 3 and layer 2. The reason why these are considered inline is because you see inside of a layer 3 VPN specifically, you see the provider's network. If you do a trace route through, you'll see MPLS label switches, label values show up in the MPLS label path. Now layer 2 VPNs are considered to be transparent, although you, they still follow the same flow logic from the ingress provider edge router to the egress provider edge router, except for how they are treating the customer traffic is a little bit different. They overlay it inside of the MPLS backbone. We won't be really diving into that in this video, but the concept is still the same as layer 3, except for it's layer 2 connectivity. So the endpoints, so the customer routers, look like they're directly connected to each other, even though they are going directly through the MPLS backbone. The next one we have, and these types of traffic are unencrypted. They are private, but they are not encrypted. That's why it's a little bit different than the traditional overlay VPNs where in overlay VPNs, the most simple one is referred to as a GRE or generic routing encapsulation tunnel. GRE tunnels allow us to go through and connect over a type of transport, whether this is internet or MPLS or whatever other type of transport you might have in place, 4G LTE for example, 
and they allow you to overlay the connection. The, the next one, and this is also unencrypted transport. The next one we have is referred to as IPsec VPN or Internet Protocol Security VPNs. This is a very another variation of the overlay VPN, but this particular variation is encrypted transport. The next one we have is going to be SSL VPN or Remote Access VPN. This particular type of VPN is also encrypted, but the difference between IPsec VPN and SSL VPN is from a remote access perspective is IPsec VPN is going to be router to router or firewall to firewall terminated. Or remote access VPN or SSL VPN, that is going to be terminated on a firewall or a router with the capability, but there's not going to be a router on the other end. So it's going to be a endpoint like a mobile phone, a PC, a laptop, something like that, that is going to be connecting directly to and forming that VPN connection with the firewall. In IPsec VPN, you have two firewalls or two routers terminating that encrypted connection. Now we've talked about the underlay or inline and the overlay, and we need to define a little bit about each one. So the underlay is a multi-hop endpoint to router to endpoint type of connectivity. In other words, this, where we have a PC that connects to a router, that router connects to another router, that router connects to another router, and finally that, route, that final router, the third one on the right, connects to that endpoint. So whenever the PC tries to connect to that other PC, and that does a trace route or tries to do any type of communication, the PC would see all the communication between those routers. That is what they refer to as the underlay. This is every physical hop you must pass through from point A to point B or source to destination. Now, the underlay is what your MPLS layer 3 VPN would look like. It's just the router in the middle there. That would be a provider edge router, or I'm sorry, provider core router, and that router would show up with labeled switch paths. You'd see that if you did a trace route and you happen to see MPLS label show up, that's what you're seeing. The next one we have is overlay, which is direct endpoint to endpoint via IP stuck tunnel, which is going to look like this, where we have a router or a firewall, and you have some sort of connectivity in the middle, internet in this particular case, where the internet could be any service provider, Time Warner Cable, Verizon, Spectrum, AT&T, take your pick, it doesn't matter. This also could be 4G LTE. It could be a cellular internet connection as well. All that matters is the there is an interface providing internet connectivity to the router over that transport. It doesn't matter what the actual transport is. If it's publicly accessible, it's referred to as internet. Then we have the last type, which is overlay, which is direct endpoint to endpoint via SSL VPN, where you have a PC that connects over some sort of WAN or internet connection to a firewall that is running an SSL VPN service. Like, for instance, on Cisco ASAs, you have the WebVPN feature. Or if you happen to be using the client-based connectivity cap capability known as AnyConnect, you would fire up AnyConnect on the PC on the left, and then it would point towards the firewall on the right, form a secure connection via SSL or IPsec, and then you'd be able to pass that traffic through the firewall to the PC on the far right behind the firewall. That is the whole purpose of these connect connection types. Now, in this video, we went ahead and we broke down exactly what is a VPN. So we talked about a VPN definition, the VPN overview, broke down the different VPN types, and the VPN overlays. I'd like to thank you for stopping by and checking this out. Until next time, guys, take it easy. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.